have LA Knight in NXT coming up as Max Dupree and his juices were being titillated, apparently. <laughs> and here you are, a new fresh coat of paint. You know, yes. you join Maxim Male Models and there's Maxine Dupree as well. And again, I feel like in today, for I don't know why, but in today's world versus just like six months ago, that would have been like a Twitter meme catch on that people would have absolutely just gone crazy over and loved it because it's like it's not successful we're gonna make it successful so how is this pitch to you because it seems that somebody likes you because you keep getting opportunities i don't know that anybody liked me but i was not doing stuff a lot and uh whenever they needed somebody i if if you can't say anything else about me i have a lot of range <laughs> I've, I've done a lot of things in wwe i've worn a lot of hats and, uh, you know, if they want me to be a big monster or uh, a male model, I I'm never going to say no. Maybe that's maybe that's why I kept on getting these things. Um, maximum male models. Uh, I had been out. They split me in uh, T-Bar up, die jacket down in NXT. He was killing it, obviously. But uh, they split us up in the draft. They didn't really have any plan for either of us singles wise. And I was on SmackDown where there is no main event. So there was, I was really doing nothing. Uh, I was sitting at home and I'm going back and forth with a writer and they're saying, Hey, we've got this idea. We want you to be Mace the executioner. And I was like, cool. And then a couple of months later I get concept art. And uh, then they're like, they think it's too close to retribution Mace. And I was like, okay. And then we're like, we want you to be Mace the mercenary. And I was like, cool. And uh, after a month of pitching stuff back and forth, I get concept art and it's like, uh, I'm like a Blade Runner, like uh, I had pitched coming out on a motorcycle. It was like, cool, I'll be a mercenary. And they were like, uh, okay, hey, uh, we need you at SmackDown next week. And I'm like, cool, are we doing the mercenary thing? And you're like, no, Vince has an idea. <laughs> I was like, great, what is it? He says, uh, you are going to be a male model. I was like, awesome, you're going to do it with Mansoor. Even better. <laughs> and um they had no idea me and mentor we were we've been best friends ever since he got to the performance center uh he was also not doing anything and uh basically what we go to uh smackdown i do a dark match and we talk to vince and um we explain he explains hey listen uh you guys are two good looking guys uh we i want you to do this male model thing and if you commit to it then it's really going to work out for you. And we're like, great, we will commit to anything. And um, it was a very avant-garde presentation. I think the first couple of weeks, which was the only time I'd been pushed in my entire life where they'd, uh, they'd tell everybody to clear the ring. We need to work on these model segments. Uh, Money in the Bank was happening. It was like the go-home show for Money in the Bank. And there's Money in the Bank ladders all over the entranceway. And... Uh, Vince comes out and Vince does not come out. Vince does not leave his office at this time. He comes out and he's like, get this crap out of here. We need to work on the runway show. And uh, I was like, man, I love me and Manny looked at each other. We were like, this is it. This is it for us. <laughs> Two weeks later, text message. I'm retiring. <laughs> Push over. The Vince Mc, the Vince McMahon uh, that the that was the Vince that was Vince texting everybody. He texted everybody in the company. Good luck, good luck. I'm retired. <laughs> Dang, that was it. It's incredible. And then we were like, man, the machine was finally behind us, and the unprecedented thing, something that's never happened in the history of wrestling. Vince McMahon is no longer running WWE. <laughs> I was at the SmackDown that exact day, and I remember sitting at the bar about an hour before. That was in like, Boston, right? Yep. And my phone yes. goes off, and I'm like, I'm talking to my buddy. I'm like, you won't believe what is going on. He's like, what's up? I was like, Vince McMahon just retired. And yes. Brock Lesnar, apparently he's pissed off, and he's left the arena. And he's left, yes. And he's left. I was like, what? He, of course, Brock Lesnar was, was there. He was there. Yeah, he that was in the evening. Yeah, that was – um. That was Sydney uh, Maxine Dupree's first day on the job. Her first day on the job, we get there where she's nervous. She was supposed to have an in-ring promo. 
and uh we're we're just like she's with us the whole time because she doesn't know anybody she's brand new we're like don't worry just stick by us everything's gonna be fine we get the text that vince is retired and everybody's running around like the whole place is on fire <laughs> so what how does that day go for everyone in general you know not just you but everyone in general because you just saw the the carpet for obviously ripped out from underneath you so now you're yeah. thinking like okay well what's next but nobody knows what's next because nobody this knows is the first time and only time this has happened in the history of the wwe and professional wrestling like he's the walt disney of wrestling so right how are you feeling mentally and how's everyone else you're describing everyone's running around screaming and everything's on fire well, obviously, the show completely changed uh, within minutes. Uh, we have no idea who's actually in charge. Uh, we have a meeting where I believe that's when they announced that Stephanie would be taking over as the CEO, Stephanie, who we love. Stephanie, who uh, we thought we had jobs for life because after we did our uh, SummerSlam water spot, Stephanie walks up to me and Mansoor and she says, you guys are amazing. You guys can do no wrong in my space. I was like, we've got jobs for life, baby. We were wrong. But she's uh, always been lovely to us. But uh, we found out that she would be taking over as CEO. And uh, the show all changed. And it's just a bunch of speculating. Um, it's funny. When we all got the texts, we're all sitting around the ring. Because people are going over their matches and their segments and all that. And you could see certain people got it, and they were like, and then other people were like, <laughs> not that we were ever like Vince's baby doll, but we that we were much closer to being Vince's toy than we were ever to being Hunter's toy because we weren't NXT guys. But uh, you could just see the guys who were the NXT stalwarts. Uh, the black and gold warriors just light up because they're like, ah, finally, we're going to get our chance. And then the uh, <laughs> the collection of former athletes and body guys <laughs> just were in the dumps because they were like, our future is so insecure. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was all changed. It was a whole, it was like two years of just, nobody really knew what was going on. Like, you didn't know when, because Vince would eventually come back. And uh, we assumed Hunter was in charge. But then some days Vince would just uh, call in and be like, I want the entire show to be changed. And so we didn't we didn't know what to expect week to week. It was really chaotic. Yeah. Uh, you know, with wrestling media, there's always a chance of uh, some things getting right and something's definitely getting wrong. And the Vince McMahon, uh, he's gone. He has no power. Oh, wait, raw script got thrown out like at six o'clock. Oh, now it's a whole new show. Wait, I thought he wasn't here. And right. not until like the official uh the selling of the wwe was it like okay we know who's in charge because this is a public traded company and this company is not screwing around with their stockholders mm -hmm. yeah that was a uh, quite a, a day and it's interesting because other wrestlers who have come out now with interviews have flat out said exactly what you just said of they didn't i'm not that's not the text message part but they were like as soon as vince was out of power their career was over because they were vince people and then yeah. you obviously have the black and gold NXT wrestlers who are were like, oh my god, finally, because they were either smaller, not as big as you, other things like that. But it well, seems it's just, like everyone keeps it's having an opinion. Yeah, it's not. It's not. I have no sour grapes about anything. Yeah. I completely understand. You have your guys, and of course, you're going to use your guys. But um, it it always comes back to timing. Uh, I think my entire career has been like a comedy of errors when it comes to timing. Um, and I think I, I, for one, think that we all end up exactly where we're supposed to end up. And I'm not, you know, I'm very thankful for the career that I had. But I just look at all of the just bizarre things that would happen at just the wrong time, like Vince retiring or um, uh, me getting signed. If I would have gotten signed, Three years prior, if, the, if I wasn't playing football at the time, then that's when they were looking for football players. Or um, NXT 2.0 was two years after I had already gotten called up to the main roster when they were using football players and they were looking for guys that were just like me. And I'm like, man, I'm this close like every time. And um, I mean, even getting released, I, I very much equate to timing. It was just 
we were guys that uh, they decided that they didn't want to do the maximum male model thing anymore. Uh, we were pitching idea after idea, but we were guys that weren't doing anything at the time. And I'm sure they needed salary cap room to bring back different guys and re-sign people. And they just needed to get rid of some guys. And we were just guys that weren't doing anything at the time. So uh, it's all timing at the end of the day. So then with the LA Knight situation where he was Max Dupree and then he obviously uh, either put his foot down and said something or someone said something – like, how does your situation change when he decides that? I don't even know if he decided. Like, how does it happen where one day you're with him, the next day you're not with him? I don't know how it went down entirely. Um, I don't know that it was fully um, uh, LA's decision. Um, obviously, obviously, he wanted to be LA Knight. Why wouldn't you? But, um, I think at some point Hunter said this was when Hunter was in charge that, Hey, you want to move in the direction of going back to LA night? Because there was a pretty quick storyline of him just switching back. Um, and, uh, when he was gone, we were like, Oh, we're done. <laughs> like that. Like they, they just cut him off from us so that we could just, <laughs> um, which we did essentially for, for a couple months, we were kind of off, which led to our, uh, me and Manny, we we're very uh, we, we refuse to not do anything, right? So if we're sitting at home, we're always thinking of ideas. We're always trying to come up with stuff, and um, we wanted to make we're we're very happy to work together. We wanted to make this thing work because we were like, hey, this has legs. This is fun. People like it. If if we can present it in the way that we can present it. I think we can, we have a spot on this show. It's the three hour variety show. You have time for Zoolander on the three hour variety show. So that's when we kind of batten down the hatches and we were like, Hey, let's film our own YouTube show. Um, very small team of me and Manny and uh, Maxine. Um, we wrote all our own stuff. We got, uh, we got somebody, Andrew Carr, who still works there on the video team to film and edit everything. And we made our own show. And that was what, that was what gave us the momentum to end up coming back. Um, we were on SmackDown at the time and we switched to raw. They wanted to put us into a program with the alpha Academy, which was the last thing we did. Um, that was all very much based on, Hey, those guys owned it. Like those guys went out and they did their thing. They proved that they could be entertaining with this thing. Let's do that. Let's just take what they were doing and let's do that on TV. And uh, unfortunately, rug got pulled out from us under again. But um, we'll always be very proud about the fact that, like, we scratched and clawed, man. <laughs> we scratched and clawed every step of the way. Yeah, man. I love the Otis involvement of thinking he was going to leave Chad Gable for you. And it seemed like a logical situation. All right, break up Alpha Academy, put Otis with you. Suddenly there's jealousy amongst this faction, but yet you're kind of behind Otis. It made sense. And then we had this, we had this beautiful story. Yeah. We had a beautiful story where, uh, we wanted, we wanted to set up Maxine cause you, you got, you got bad guys, but like, you don't have like evil guys. Right. We wanted to set up Maxine as like an actual evil character, like somebody who's just manipulating this guy. Cause she wants to try and drive a wedge between the alpha Academy. We end up dragging Otis along. We get him, uh, we get him all done up when like, it's funny and haha at first and we're having fun. We're doing silly, you know, fish out of water segments where we're teaching Otis how to be a runway model. But the, uh, the big thing that we wanted to get to was we wanted to have uh, Otis having a model graduation ceremony. Right. And we do a legit makeover where we get him a beautiful haircut, give him a clean beard put him in a nice, freshly tailored suit, have him actually looking like a million bucks, like actual feel-good moment. Looks like the boys have come around on him. Looks like Maxine loves him. Looks like we're all going to be one big happy family, and we have this model graduation ceremony. And in the moment where he thinks that he's a maximum male model, carry, slop, leave him in the mud, and completely embarrass him and then have Chad come out and make the save and then go into a feud from there where we actually have stakes and emotion and like meat, like actually have like a good meaty storyline. Um, but it wasn't meant to be. 